Hi, Tyler Interfidelity here at Can Jam Rocky Mountain Audio Fest 2016 in the ZMF uh, headphone booth with Zach. How you doing, Zach? Hey, everybody. Good to see you, bud. Yeah, good to see you, man. All right. So let, tell us about your new headphones. Well, uh, this is the Atticus, and it's our polyethylene driver. And so the big issue or deal with it is that it's a fully proprietary ZMF design. And uh, like our uh, Fostex stuff that we also do, work with Vibro Labs and uh, our uh, lead engineer, Luke Getty, to uh, design the headphone. And uh, kind of what I've been telling people is that this headphone kind of is more along the lines of the classic ZMF sound that people are used to. Uh, it's kind of warm, a little bit uh, mid-bass boost, a smooth sound. And uh, they're all 300 ohm impedance, so they sound great through uh, tube amps. And uh, a lot of people are kind of asking about, you know, why do you name the headphones Atticus and Icon? And uh, the, the kind of meaning behind those, this is kind of a, cla Atticus kind of means classic and iconic, that kind of thing. And then uh, Icon is kind of like uh, the headphone that I've always wanted to build. Because uh, when I was a kid, I would steal my dad's uh, MDR 7506s. And uh, I don't know, I'd always thought I want to build a headphone that's uh, just what I want it to be one day. So Icon's kind of like born of the, my childhood, I guess. So and, and so, what was it like um, dealing with the, the new drivers and, and sorting through them? I, I guess you spent a lot of time listening to a variety of different drivers, eh? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, one thing that uh, I wanted to look for was to uh, find a, a biocellulose driver that had a high impedance, because I was finding when I was using the low impedance drivers, I got a kind of spikier treble and kind of things that I didn't want um, in the sound I was going for. So I, I sorted through a, a bunch of different companies and uh, finally found a you know, manufacturer to make drivers the way I wanted them made with ceramic housing and high quality materials and everything. And uh, it, was, it was just a really eye-opening experience. I learned a lot about how I wanted things tuned and how they didn't want things tuned. And, uh, I know, it's, a, it's a lot of fun, uh, you know, getting parts in and either being really frustrated or really happy with how they come out, you know. Cool. And this is the Icon. This one has a different driver in it. Yeah, so the other one, the uh, Atticus was polyethylene. This is the Icon with the biocellulose driver. They both have the 300 ohm impedance, so it'll sound great with OTL amps. But, uh, you know, our other T50 stuff is much harder to drive than either of these. You know, you can listen to these um, out of, you know, portable dabs and stuff like that and get enough volume. But I do tell people they, they sound the best off a, a nice tube amp or with more power and stuff. Yeah, I was, it was funny. I came up to the booth and I was... Uh, I took out my AK240 and I went, oh, this is ZMF, uh, may not drive it up to the right levels. And then I remembered that he had the new drivers in there and there was no problem getting a decent level out of the AK. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and I thought they sounded really nice. I mean, they were a, a really good sound. These are, uh, do you call them an open design or a semi-open design? You know, I, when I started selling the Omni as the T50 design that got pretty popular, I would tell people they're semi-open, but in truth, they're uh, closed with vents is what I like to say because I think they're, they're more closed than um, you know a lot of other designs people call closed and kind of leak sound a lot and uh, pretty much I tell people unless you're in like a library that's like an anechoic chamber or something they will pretty much serve as closed headphones I mean one of the reasons I do the, the vents on the sides is that you know when you're building a headphone um, you're gonna have a little variability from driver to driver and cup to cup because just the way all the parts go together and so by having the vents around you can close them just to the perfect amount for each headphone so that they're all uh, tuned consistently, right. and measuring consistently, and that you can put out a consistent product. Because if, if they didn't have the vents and you were constrained to an exact amount of airflow, that product would actually be more different with each uh, one that's put together. Cool. Well, yeah, a lovely headphone, but I, I, I've got to ask you, what's, what are these amplifiers here? Oh, yeah, so uh, I love to show these because it's a great conversation piece. These are made by Steve Decker, whose company is called Deckware. And he's out of Peoria, Illinois, which is a couple hours from me. And, uh, you know, he actually runs a festival every year. And this year it ran at the same time as RMAF, so I, I couldn't get him out here. But uh, his amps are the CSP3. And I believe uh, that's the OTL amp. And then the one on the right, he currently calls the uh, Deckware UFO. And it, it runs 50 impedance planars beautifully. He kind of tuned it around the Odyssey uh, LCD series. Uh, and then these one, this the OTL amp is great because it works as a preamp into the Deckware Taboo. The Taboo can run speakers at 1.7 watts as well. So it's, it's kind of your you know small office space do it all uh, tube amp 
setup. And you can, I think both of them, if you get both, they're about three grand. They run about 1,500 to 1,800 each. And wow. you know, of course you can get whatever tubes you want and roll them in and out and spend another 50 grand on uh, yeah. you know, vintage uh, <laughs> tubes and stuff. Well, there, I, I, I gotta say, I'm, I, in my heart, I'm old school and I, I just, I love to see analog meters on things. So uh, I thought they were pretty cool. Yeah. All right, well, Zach, it's good to see you, man. Thanks so much for uh, your time today. And we'll see you guys at the next booth.